Ladies and gentlemen, it is I, Tetcher, and I'm here on January the 13th, my own personal birthday. There are many like it, but this one is mine. And I have spent most of my morning downstairs opening presents and having a grand old time playing some heroes, completing my daily quests. I just unlocked the Zeratul Master Skin, so hooray, that was fun, I finally got my 10k gold. And now the patch notes for closed beta, which will be happening tomorrow for EU, it will probably be up by the time this video is up in America. But these are the patch notes for that, so there's a lot I'm expecting to see here, but we will have to see, so let's have a look. Let's have a quick read through here. We've brought Heroes of the Storm offline for a period of extended maintenance, blah blah blah. Tentacle Alpha testing phase is a f has officially come to an end. Hooray! We made it, guys. Fantastic jobs all around. Pats on the back and all that jazz. Uh, new hero, first iteration, rank played is all the stuff that's coming, but we'll get into that. There's also a video here. It's not my place to show you that. You can go find that on the official Heroes of the Storm YouTube channel. So, table of contents. We can see the general stuff. New battleground, new hero, user interface, art shop, design gameplay, battlegrounds, talents, heroes, and bug fixes. Basically, everything has been changed in some way, shape, or form. So, that should be fun. And a uh, little sneak preview of who it might be. You can't imagine who the new hero is. Alright, so let's have a look at the general. Not much in here, actually. Uh, we can see... Two new portraits have been added to the game and they will be awarded to players who accomplish the following during the technical alpha phases. And that is played one or more games during the technical alpha. Not a challenging uh, portrait to get. And the other one is reach player level 40. I've definitely done that. In fact, uh, I don't know if it will appear on screen. No, it doesn't. I didn't, was not able to show that on screen, but yep, I've completed that one, so you can get yourself a nice little portrait there. And two new portrait rewards have been added for players to accomplish the following uh, during the test. Uh, these portrait rewards are not available for use yet, so there are new portraits that are in the game, but are currently not usable. Let us move on. If you can hear barking downstairs, it's because my brother's friend is round, and he has a puppy. It's adorable, its name is Arthur, and it's about Arthur Dog. So let's move down. We have the new battleground. It is Sky Temple. Any of you who are watching the BlizzCon match, you would have seen exactly what this is about. So let's have a quick read through though. Sky Temple, a brand new free lane battleground, has been added to Heroes of the Storm and is now available for play in all game modes. Temples at the center of each lane will activate for 90 seconds. It says the center, there's like, they're like slightly above or below the lanes, they're just a little bit off from the lanes, so you have to, the lanes will keep pushing separately from these temples. Um, yeah, they can fire devastating beads of energy at enemy structures. Once the temple has been captured, its guardians will rise and attempt to remove the players by force, defeat them to main control of the active temple. The will cease firing shortly after all players have left its grounds, and can be recaptured by either team. Basically, you stand, think the shrines on Dragonshire, only they, uh, while you have them, they attack you, and they shoot your opponent's buildings like Blackheart. So it's sort of a mix between all the objectives. I like the way Blizzard is doing this at the moment, just focusing on multiple different ways of sorting it. All right, so that will be in the game, and it will, yeah, the temples will deactivate once their ammunition is depleted. So yeah, this is not a permanent thing. They won't, you won't be able to bombard your opponent just by taking a massive knockback comp and just sitting in the temple forever and killing the, killing the minions there. All right, let us move on to the new hero. It is Thrall, the war chief of the Horde. And these are his abilities. He is an assassin player. He is an assassin hero. So that is what most people, very, uh, a lot of people, sorry, are excited about. Ability number one. Uh, hang on, no, let's read his trait first because that's the most important bit about him. Frost Wolf Resilience. Casting abilities on enemies grant charges that heal you. I believe when you hit three charges, you gain a heal. So he gets passive healing as he goes by just casting his abilities. And these are his abilities. Chain Lightning, blast free enemies with lightning, very nice. Feral Spirit, releases a fiery wolf spirit to burn enemies and root heroes, very aggressive ability. And Wind Fury, increases attack and movement speed, very nice. And lots of names you'll recognize from Hearthstone or World of Warcraft. And his heroic abilities, Earthquake, Persistently slows enemies in a massive area and sundering. Sunder the earth in a line, damaging and stunning enemies in its path. You will have seen this in the BlizzCon match as well. User interface. Versus mode has been renamed to Quick Match. Yep, this is quite important because 
Uh, no, hang on. All daily quests can now be completed in practice mode. Excellent. That's nice to have that back again. It was uh, very difficult for a lot of casual or new players to complete their daily quests when they just wanted to try and learn the game because they were pretty much forced to do them in verses. So they would just lose and feed for their team, which was very unfortunate for the people who like to try hard, like me. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, and this is the important bit. Hero League has been implemented. Initial implementation for Hero League, the first ranked play mode in Heroes of the Storm has been added to the game. With Hero League, players will be able to queue up alone or in a party of any size for ranked competitive, match uh, competitive matches against others of similar skill and party size. So yes, if you go in as a pre-made, you will be playing against other pre-maids. It's the concern people had that pre-maids will basically rule the top of the ladder. It's probably assumed that this will be adjusted for in some way. And in order to queue in Hero League, and this is very important, you must have max player, you must have player level of 30 or higher and own at least 10 more heroes. And the weekly rotation does not count. That is an interesting decision, but one I will leave for another day. And the reason for that limit is draft mode. After finding a match, players will enter draft mode in which teams will take turns picking heroes they'd like to use. The coin toss will decide who goes first. And hero selection is basically in a snake format. I don't know if it's a 1-2-2-2-1. Uh, two, 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 uh, I think I did that right. I think it's one, it's four twos. I don't know if I counted four twos, but whatever. Uh, players may only choose from a pool of heroes they own. Each player has 30 seconds to select a hero. This will help massively. And once locked in, a hero can no longer be selected by any other player. So there are no mirrors in this game. <coughs> Another thing people brought up and were quite interested about. And points and ranks. All Hero League players will be ranked individually, starting at rank 50. Win games to earn points to count towards promotion to the next rank maximum rank of 1. So it's scored downwards, like Hearthstone. Losing games will result in loss of points, and enough losses can cause demotion to the previous rank, though not below rank 50. Once again, quite like Hearthstone. Players can view their own rank and win-loss record at any time through the Hero League play screen. And game abandonment, this is very important. A player that leaves an in-progress Hero League or quick match will not be allowed to queue for ranked play until a new quick match has been completed. You can't leave that. You have to go back in, you have to see that game through, and there's already an AFK kick system in, so you can't just AFK in that. You have to actually play, and hopefully Blizzard will implement something to stop people just trying to way, find ways to abuse that. They seem to be focusing on this pretty hard, and there will be some penalties, etc. And that player and party members will receive... Uh, oh yeah, anyone in the player who leaves party will also receive it. I'm hoping they'll put something in to stop uh, this happening if people DC, because currently there's a way in the game that you can dis disconnect and not reconnect. So this could be devastating if it happened in ranked for people, because it's going to affect your entire team, which is horrible. All right, custom games. Lobby mode has a drop-down. Basically, you can now pick the draft stuff. And there's first come, first served draft, which I kind of like, which is kind of interesting. So that is cool. Uh, and that's actually, um, yeah, that's fine. That is fine. All right, art. Let's move on. New 3D art has been added for stim packs in the Heroes of the Storm shop. No one cares. Stim packs are important to the game, and it's nice that they look cool. But that's not important because we need to get on to the important news for everyone. The battlegrounds healing wells have received a visual update. I thought they looked nice already. But they've received an update when activated by a player. Siege camp spawn animations have been updated. That's cool. They sort of just walked in, kind of. It was a bit interesting. I want to see how they've changed that. And various assets have been optimized to help improve performance. Next, heroes mount and skins. There's a lot of these. So I'm going to have to sort of rush through these. Dance victory and taunt animations have been added to a number of heroes. Diablo has received facial animations, which is awesome. He's going to be able to talk like Chen now. Sergeant Hammer has received an additional polish for a number of her animations, which is nice. Various portraits have received updated lightning, lighting, not lightning, and animations. The following heroes at Mount Skin the Variation have received visual improvements. Chen's Master Skin is variation. Jaina and Jaina's Base Skin variation. 
uh, variations. Nazi Bow's base skin variation. Rainer's, Rainer's base skin variation. Sergeant Hammer's master skin, it's variation. Good, I already have that one. Stitch's base skin variation. Tyker's base skin variation. Counter, Countess Kerrigan's bat mount. Na, 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 na. Countess Kerrigan while using mounts other than her bat. Cyberwolf mount variations. Golden Cyberwolf second mount variation has been made more distinct. Yeah, they were, they were quite similar, so fair enough. And several hero skins have received brand new art for certain abilities. This is huge. People have been looking forward to this. I'm excited about this. Asguldan has a slightly changed Globe of Annihilation. Countess Kerrigan, Impaling Blades and Primal Grasp. Cyberak, Scarapost and Impale. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. I own Cyberak. Uh, Pajamafer, Locust Strain, Symbiote and Cocoon Form. And Skeletal Labafer, excellent. I saw the video and it showed stuff for Pajama Abafer and I own Skeletal Labafer. And I was like, do I have to buy another skin for Abafer? But they appear to have updated this. So I am going to be able to continue playing my Skeletal Abafer because it looks cool. And Spectra Nova, one of the coolest looking skins in the game. It has a slightly different snipe now. Uh, several hero abilities have received updated visual effects. Faustad's updated abilities and Tailwind trait. Jaina's chilled debuff, visible to Jaina only. Lily's updated abilities and Raina's basic attack. So that's cool. They've all received little updates as well. And the following heroes have received a new ability icon art. Abafa, Jaina, Nova, Sergeant Hammer, Sonya, and Tyriel. A lot of stuff in there about art. Uh, so cannot wait to see what those look like in the game. And finally, a number of summoned units have received visual improvements. This is mostly over what we've talked about already, but we can see it's going to be Asguldan, his minions, uh, Jaina's water elemental after learning, learning the winter mute talent, which is awesome. Master, Master Jaina's water elemental. Nazibo's ravenous spirit is now team colored. This is hugely important because it was very confusing before. Zergling spawned by Kerrigan's impaling blades is awesome as well. Roach is spawned by Zagara's infested drop. And the following skin variations have had their order swapped. Candy King Muradin's brown and green skin variations. Stitch's pink and green skin variations. And Master Jaina's pink and black skin variations, which is very cool. All right, let us move on to the shop. Weekly sales have been added. And it's basically three items per week will be on sale. And they will start on Mondays. And when does it say they will end? Uh, doesn't. Apparently, I'm assuming in a week's, a week's time from the Monday. So every Monday. Um, at least time, items will previously available. So return to normal price. And three new items will become available at a discount. And initial weekly sales will take one of two forms. One hero and two hero skins. One hero, one skin and one mount. So we're going to see a lot more little sales. I'm assuming they'll still uh, be putting on bundles, which will all be discounted because that is awesome. Oh, there we go. Bundle packs. The following bundle packs have been added to the shop and available for a limited time. Hellhammer Thrall Bundle. Uh, Luxoria Skin Bundle. Luxoria Complete Bundle. What's Lux Luxoria? I don't know what Luxoria is. I'm going to have to look that up. Uh, following bundle packs have been removed. Altered Fates is now gone and the Winter Veil is now gone. Heroes, Thrall has been added to the shop and all his skins. Mounts, Magic Carpet has been added to the shop as well. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, yeah, I, I know exactly what Luxoria is now. Um, please note, Magic Carpet Mount will eventually become available for purchase as an individual item with a future game update. Price changes. Prices for Stitches has been reduced to four, uh, eight dollars forty-nine US dollars or seven thousand gold. He was ten k gold, so it's a nice price for drop considering he's so important in the current meta. All right, well, we might not be. We might see some nerfs further down here. We will have to see. And Thrall's master skin has been added. Uh, the following brand new hero skins have been added to the shop. This is exciting. Crypt King Tassadar looks awesome. Looks like Anubis. Desert Queen Zagara also looks cool. Hellhammer Thrall. This is probably the Thrall skin I will be rocking because it looks amazing. And Luxorian Monkey Brightwing. It looks amazing. It's the Flying Monkey. They renamed it though as Flying Monkey in the video. And the following skins have been temporarily removed from the shop. Oh, uh, okay. So these are uh, the Wintervale skins are going to be seasonal. So that's interesting. I was not aware. All right, design and gameplay. Cloak reveal duration increased from two seconds to three seconds. This is just purely to hit home onto Zeratul and Nova a little bit because they were very, very good in terms of their cloaks. And uh, Hearthstone can no longer be cast from within the altar of the storms. Not really an important change. It's just something that could happen. Alright, Battlegrounds. 
the core damage versus heroes has been increased by 20%. Now this is a huge change because pretty much a lot of games previously were won due to the fact that they were people would just rush the core and win. The damage increase against heroes is massive. It means people can't rush the core as often. They have to have some minions with them. It's going to make it very difficult. It's also going to increase game time. So we're going to see a couple longer games in heroes, which is a bit unfortunate, but it means we're going to be seeing a lot less cheese. And the amount of time that towers are disabled while regenerating am ammunition has been increased from 20 to 30 seconds. This will be done to align with the previous change in which rate tower ammo regeneration was reduced uh, to 1 per 15 seconds. As such, towers will now come back online with 2 ammunition. So yeah, basically, it's just changing the way tower ammunition works. You'll see, it's easier to see that one in the game than to explain it. Mercenaries, Grave Golem Root will no longer pause. Grave Golem will no longer pause when casting Root. Good, because it was causing a bug. Uh, Root will now co uh, co be cast on ranged minions, which is cool. And heroic units will remain the preferred targets. The Stomp, uh, the post cast delay on Stomp has been removed. That's nice because you could tell when it was coming. Stomp will now be cast when there are at least two heroic units around the Grave Golem, or at least three minions, same as the Plant Terror. The Stomp will not be cast unless Grave Golem is already stationary, and Stomp now deals increased damage versus minions. So that's nice. It's a bit more of a clear ability for the Golem. It's going to make the the uh, Haunted Mines map a lot more interesting. Talents. Once again, this is probably the second most important section of the, of the, uh, of the patch notes, other than the Hero section, which we're coming up to next. So let's have a look through here. General. Level 20 talents have been reordered in the talent select pane for all heroes, so talents which modify heroic abilities will be listed in the first and second slots. Just a nice little change. I kind of like that. Nothing too important there. Resurgence of the Storm has been removed from the game. Now that is a huge change. It was one of the best abilities in the game, and now it's gone. Blizzard listened to the community. There were a couple people who said it was in a good place and a lot of people who complained about it. So it is gone. When you kill your opponent, unless they're Diablo, they're staying dead, which is massive for the game. That's actually going to reduce the game times. Like we said, the core damage was increased. It's going to reduce the game times a bit, having your opponents not instantly respawn. All right. Mule intelligence has been increased. Yay! That is fantastic. The mule was dumb as a sack of bricks, or a sack of minerals, I should say. But mules now prioritize repairing structures over repairing am replenishing ammunition. Good. If a building has ammunition, this ammunition will still be replenished while it is being repaired. Good. Mules will now prioritize town halls and towers, then gates and moon wells, then walls. If two structures are of equal priority are in range of the mule's placement, it will begin by repairing the one it was dropped closer to. So yes, the mule knows kind of what it's doing now, which is good. And after all structures in range are healed, the mule will then prioritize based on their need for ammunition. So the mule knows what the hell it's doing now. It's actually a viable pick. Like someone posted, there was a post on Reddit about um, you how to basically use the mule's AI effectively. And it was an incredible change. It was, it, it was incredibly important to put that up there. So we'll see. Uh, now we don't need it anymore, but it was nice of them to put it up. I'll have to find out who that is, and I might. I, if I remember to put it in, I'll put it in the uh, description of the video. And Mercenary Lord. New functionality. Siege and Bruiser minions now deal 50% increased damage. And a player with Mercenary Lord talent must be within proximity of Siege or Bruiser mercenaries in order for them to receive the damage bonus. So now you can't just Mercenary Lord minions and just... Uh, you can't just take a camp with Mercenary Lord and then bugger off somewhere else. You don't even have to be near the minions when you capture them by the looks of it. I think you literally just stand near them and you passively buff them. So if you... This basically makes this talent a must-pick on Asmodan. Because now any minions in your... Any mercenaries in your lane, you're going to be just pushing all the way. What do you get in exchange for that? You get the damage over time on fire, or I think you get the mana cost reduced on laser... Um, I think that's it. No, I think you get one of the demon talents as well. But I cannot remember exactly. Let us move on, though, because now we're on to the hero section. These heroes have received changes. And there's a lot of them, so we're going to have to get into it. Aberfer has received a major overhaul. He has a new R ability, which is fantastic, and it is called 
Evolve Monstrosity. Turn an allied minion or locust into a monstrosity for 60 seconds. When enemy minions near the monstrosity die, it gains 4 health and 4% health and 4% basic attack damage, stacking up to 30 times. U using Symbiote on monstrosity allows Alpha to control it. Excuse me, in addition to Symbiote's normal benefits. New talent at level 16, Volatile Mutation. Update ev Ultimate Evolution clones and monstrosities deal da- uh, sorry, update- uh, yeah, Ultimate Evolution and monstrosities deal damage e uh, to nearby enemies every 3 seconds as well as when they die. So basically they're just doing damage over time, which is kind of cool. And finally, at level 20 for Amber's Ultimates, Evolution Complete. Increase the monstrosity's duration by 50%, so it will be lasting 90 seconds, and the monstrosity gains, a new gains the ability to deep tunnel to any visible location. So you're basically mobile Abatha with that monstrosity. It is very, very cool. Locust Rain. Eradicate minions talent. Removed. That's it. <laughs> yep, that's that's quite cool. Combat Adaption talent. Removed. I don't remember what that does. Oh, that's the... Uh, I think that's the, um, the health one. I don't know. Um, regenerative Microbes talent. Removed from level 7 to level 1. Assault Locust talent. Explosion damage. Reduced from 60 plus 12 per level to 50 plus 5 per level. That is awesome. Survival Instincts. That's the one that was health. In addition to the 30 bonus, uh, to 30 health bonus to Locust, Locust will touch the list from 10 seconds. Why would you ever take anything else? A new talent, level 20 Locust Nest. Activate to a crater nest. A periodically spawns Locust. Only one Locust Nest can be active at a time. So the Locust Nest has basically been changed completely, which is awesome. So Locust Abathur is still viable. Basically, minion, pu minion lane push Abathur has just been overhauled a bit and changed. It's nice to see. I'm interested to see how it works. Symbiote. No longer has a timed duration. The Barb Spikes talent has been removed. Pressurized Glance talent has been moved from 4 to 1. I don't remember what that one did. I think that was range or damage. I think, I'm pretty sure it was damage. Uh, new talent level 4, Sustained Carapace. Increase the duration of Symbiote's Carapace E by 50% and allows it to persist after Symbiote ends. Which is cool. So wait, hang on. If it, Symbiote no longer has a timed duration, how's that work? Um, new talent level 4, Adrenal Overload. Symbiote's host now gets 25% attack speed, that's fine. Uh, new talent level 7, Network Carapace. Using Symbiote's Carapace E on a minion or mercenary also applies Carapace to all nearby allied minions. Yeah, lane push Abathur is just huge now. Uh, Symbiote Spike Burst W heals the host per enemy unit hit, or enemy hero hit, which is cool. Uh, that's called Soma Transference. And we have Hive Mind at level 20. Casting Symbiote now creates an additional Symbiote on a nearby allied hero. The Symbiote mimics, mimics the commands of the first. If the second host moves too far away, it is destroyed. That's interesting. Needle Spine Talent now increases Stab's range and damage by 20%. And the Q on Stab, the damage has been reduced a bit from 44 plus 13 to 44 plus 9. Toxic Nest, that's his mind ability. Prophilic Dispersal Talent moved from 13 to 4. I'm not, I don't remember what a lot of these do. I don't remember names very well at all. And Bal uh, Ballast Stoppers, Bal Ballista Pause, I don't actually know how to pronounce that, uh, now also increases Toxic Nest, nest Duration by 25%, in addition to granting unlimited placement range. Ah, it's the Global Mines. Yes, that is cool. And Ultimate Evolution. Ultimate Evolution clones no longer inherit the host's heroic ability. Now, this is a comment I made earlier before they nerfed it, but uh, it's kind of cool to see. Ultimate Evolution clones now provide a small amount of XP when they are killed, also something I recommended before they changed Ultimate Evolution. Cooldown has been reduced. Yeah, so they're changing it back and, take it and using everything I said about it before. And the Evolution Master and Talent has been reduced. New turn to level 20, the Evolutionary Link. As long as an Ultimate Evolution clone is alive, Ultimate Evolution's original target gains a shield equal to 20% of their maximum health that refreshes every 5 seconds. So they've changed the Ultimate Evolution up, nerfed it a little, but buffed the person you're using it on, which is cool. Alright, that's enough for Abathur. Huge changes. I think he's going in a really good direction right now. Have to see when the game comes back up for EU, and we'll watch some NA while when we can. Let's move on to Asmodan. He was also someone who people were complaining about a bit. Global Annihilation, his Q. Cooldown increased from 8 to 10. Ah, oh, someone who's literally right now level 9 on Asmodan and currently get, trying to get him to level 10. That's kind of disappointing because I built him Q build. Scaling damage has been increased from 13 to 15. Slightly happier about that because killing people with basketball is amazing. 
And taste for blood talent, damage bonus per kill increased from 1 to 2. Okay, that might make that uh, slightly more viable. That uh, basically buffs your damage every time you kill a minion with your Q. So you could probably get some decent stacks off that now. Uh, demonic Invasion, his R. Demonic Grunts now have real health rather than doubloon chest star health. This is kind of nice to see. I'm curious to see how it's going to work. Because they would, they literally just took four hits. I don't know how much health they have now. It's probably going to make them even tankier. We'll have to see. Jen, Stormer, Fire. Now has a one second cast time during which the ability can be interrupted. This is huge. Chen's been nerfed. People have been asking for it for a while. And this nerf is probably going to kick Chen down a bit on the, uh, on the pick stands and make CC even more important to try and interrupt him when he's trying to escape. Just lock him down so that he can't be... He can't just instantly transform like he used to. Felstad. Felstad has received a major overhaul. Thunderstorm, Aerial, Blitzkrieg and their supporting talents have been removed. Now, Thunderstorm was the one where he just did damage over time with his W, where he just hit a couple heroes. It wasn't great. There wasn't much to it. Stone Skin talent has also been removed on him. That's fine. He was more of a more fun as a glass cannon anyway. And new double ability, W ability, Lightning Rod. Damages an enemy and deals damage, uh, additional damage over four seconds if Faustet remains within proximity of the target. That's cool. New talent, level 4, charged up. Lightning Rod strikes up to two additional times. New target, level 13, Thunder Strikes. Lightning Rod deals 15% more damage with each subsequent strike. New talent, level 13, Static Shield. Gain a static, uh, a stacking shield worth 5% of Falstad's maximum health every t after every Lightning Rod strike. That's for four seconds. So that's kind of cool. Give him a bit of a shield. This talent seems just a little more interesting now. Which, uh, this ability, sorry, seems a bit more interesting. New ability R. This is to replace the aerial Blitzkrieg. Mighty Gust pushes enemies away in a gust of wind, slowing them by 60%. The slow decays over 3 seconds. And new talent at level 20, Wind Tunnel. Mighty Gust creates a wind tunnel for 4 seconds. Enemies caught in the tunnel will be pushed back periodically over the duration. Think uh, Emerald's Wind in a straight line. Which is cool. It's I love these knockback abilities, like Chen's Barrel before it was nerfed, Brightwing's uh, Emerald Wind, although I still think that needs to be a bit nerfed, because it it's very, very effective. I, I think we may see this change in the future, because those abilities are so massive when it comes to objectives, and because objectives are so important, uh, I'm a bit dubious, but we will have to see how it turns out. Shock and Awe R has been renamed to Hinton, uh, Hinterland Blast, and Blast of Hand has been re renamed to Call of the Wild Hammer. And the Tailwind trait, Gust of Wind talent has been renamed to Airy Gu uh, Airy, I think that's pronounced. I'll go with Airy, Airy Gusts. And Airy Gust talent reduces Tailwind activation time to 2 seconds and increases the movement speed bonus from 20% to 30%. So he just gains more movement speed as he moves around now, which is cool. And Flight, Fly Away talent has been removed. That was the reduced cooldown on it. And new talent, level 20, Epic Mount, reduces flight's cooldown by 20, per second, uh, 20 seconds and reduces casting time by 0.5 seconds, reduces flying speed by 50%. So it makes Faustad a lot more mobile, gives him an escape. It's his version of Bolt of the Storm, basically. Only a lot longer range, very important to him. Hammerang. Uh, Storm Hammer Talent removed, Wild Hammer Talent removed, new level 1 talent, Power Throw. Increase Hammerang's range by 40% and its slow duration by 25. That's a really good talent. New talent level 7, Secret Weapon. Basic attack damage increased by 80% while Hammerang is in flight. That's cool. I like that. It makes Faustad much more of a chaser. And level 16 talent, Hammer Time. It's hammer time! Wait, that's mirrored in. Uh, fast that's basic ability, basic attacks against a target slowed by hammering will now stun them. Okay, that's interesting. That's gonna make, that's very, very interesting. I cannot wait to see how that works out. And barrel roll, dogfight talent removed. New talent to level 4, flow rider. Reduces barrel roll's cooldown by 35 seconds. And new talent, level 7, free roll, removes barrel roll's mana cost. Now that's important, very important for Fast said. That's gonna probably be quite important to take. What else? Level 7? Secret Weapon? That's actually quite good actually. <laughs> I don't know. I'm interested to see what people will take now. Faustad's been changed up completely. Ganslow, Robo Goblin. 
Robo Goblin is now a passive ability that is always active. Gazlo is still able to mount after choosing this heroic. Damage bonus is reduced from 250 to 150, so he becomes the permanent Robo Goblin. I like this change. The damage reduction is not too important. It means he can. It just means he's more of a overall damage dealer instead of a someone who can rush down your core, get cloned, get bloodlusted, and win the game in four seconds. Watch my videos. Illidan. Metamorphosis R, demonic form talent, no longer removes Illidan's ability to mount, but it also no longer provides bonus movement speed when out of combat. Fine, giving it the treatment of, uh, giving it the Robo Goblin treatment. And Tooltip does not accurately, accurately reflect this uh, change in game, but will be corrected in a future patch. So that's not really a patch, that's a warning to everyone. Hopefully people will read the patch notes and not get confused in game. Jaina. Frostbolt damage has been reduced from 50 plus 16 per level to 45 plus 14 per level. Cone of Cold. Damage has been increased from 40 per level to 50. I like that. Cone of Cold was not being used. Frostbolt really was pretty much being spammed. So it's nice to see the change. And Water, water Elemental. Additional explosion damage has been increased and the basic attack damage has been reduced. So it, that's kind of a trying to push the Ring of Frost because people weren't really using it as much while still trying to keep the water elemental relevant, so I like that change. Kerrigan, Ultralisk. Ultralisk can now be retargeted using the R key, couldn't it already? Okay. Um, and Taurus, uh, Tauruskew I will go with. This talent has been reworked. Duration and health increases have been removed. Uh, the Tauruskew now morphs into an egg when it dies or expires. Uh, oh, that's the upgrade. Uh, that's the upgrade, I'm pretty sure, on it. Um, if the egg is not killed within a short time, the new Taurusku is spawned. This effect can only occur once. So I guess the Ultralisk, when it dies, it can respawn. So that's very cool. I like that. Cannot wait to see how that turns out. I'm going to sneeze. Uh, no, I'm not. All right. Lily. Lily has received a major overhaul. Yes, many of you have seen it in the video. Let's see exactly what those stats are. Protective Shield has been removed. Stone Skin has been removed. And a new level 20 talent, Kung Fu Hustle. What ultimate has been removed to replace Kung Fu Hustle? Or does she have three now? Um, I guess it's not an ultimate. I guess it's just a new talent at level 20. Abilities recharge three times fast, uh, three times as fast when Fast Feet is active. Fast Feet is Lily's passive, uh, which has uh, which has now been changed. Uh, oh no, wait! It's, uh, when she gets hit, she gains bonus movement speed. Basic attack starting damage has been increased. Nice. She can be, do a bit more harass now. Fast Feet. As you can see, the speed bonus has been decreased, so she's not going to escape everything now. New talent at level 7, Shake It Off, reduces the dura uh, duration of the next stun or root by 75%. Can only trigger once every 15 seconds. Kind of cool, like a mini Relentless. And new talent at level 16, Safety Sprint. You can sprint if you want to. You can leave the enemies behind. And this increases fast speed movement speed by a bonus by 10% uh, from 10% to 20% while Lily is under 50% health. So it allows her to run away better and be more of a wuss. Her Q healing brew this is something people were looking forward to a lot to see how this was changed. New talent increases healing brew's range by 30. That's cool with Protoss. New talent level 7 pitch perfect. After casting Healing Brew, its cost is temporarily reduced to 10 mana for 6 seconds. This effect does not stack, so it makes spamming the Q a bit more viable. Good Stuff Talent has functiona uh, functionality has been changed. Healing Brew now heals for an additional 30% over 6 seconds. Multiple heals extend the duration of this heal over time. Two for one talent functionality has been changed. No longer increases Healing Brew's mana cost, now increases Healing Brew's cooldown, which is a much better change in my opinion. Herbal Cleanse talent, movement speed bonus duration increased from 2 to 3 seconds, and the scaling healing has been decreased from 20 to 18. Nice little change. I like it. Cloud Serpent, its functionality has been changed, and it will now automatically attack nearby enemies. Only one Cloud Serpent could be active at a time, so you could just put it on yourself and run away, kite your enemies backwards, and have that thing harass them. Its mana cost has been decreased from 40 to 30. Starting damage has been increased from 15 to 20, and Timeless Creature Talent has been removed at, from level 16 to level 1. Lightning Serpent, uh, damage dealt to targets after your, uh, after your first increase. After the first, is increased by t from 25% to 50. And Search Range has been increased by 20%. New Talent, level 4, Mending Serpent. Cloud Serpent now heals its host each time it attacks. So it gives your post lifesteal, which is kind of cool. 
but lifesteal from the dragon, not from themselves. New talent 16, Serpent Sidekick. Lily gains her own Cloud Serpent after casting Cloud Serpent on an ally. Nice to see. I like that kind of change. Excuse me while I take a quick drink. <sighs> Lovely. Blinding Wind. Number of basic attacks missed increased from 1 to 2. I thought it was 2. Alright, fine. Cost of decrease from 50 mana to 40. Interesting change. Starting damage decrease from 50 to 30. Now it makes more sense. <coughs> Scaling damage increase from 12 to 13. That's fine. Gale Force Talent. Damage bonus increase from 25% to 50%. So, going to be see maybe seeing some Whirlwind build, which would be cool. Mass Vortex moved from level 1 to level 4. Okay, that's uh, changing it up a bit. Mass Vortex is the one where you could hit 5 people with your W. So, moving that there, I think, makes a lot more sense with how the W is being set out now. Sorry, the E. Um, lingering Blind. Increased number of basic attacks missed from 2 to 3. New talent level 13, Surging Winds. Lili gains 5% ability power for 8 seconds per target hit with Blinding Wind. Additional enemies hit refresh the buff duration and further increase ability power stacks up to four times. Now this is going to be quite important because coming up you will and coming up you will see why. Firstly, Jug of a Thousand Cup uh, Cups cooldown has been increased from 60 to 70. That's good. Initial heal amount decreased from 35 to 20. That's quite a strong nerf. Scaling heal increase. There we go. That fixes it up a bit. Water Dragon. Starting damage increased from 130 to 200. Scaling damage increased from 13 to 20. And slow amount increased from 40 to 70. Now I want you to imagine. 5% ability power for 8 seconds by every target hit by Blinding Wind. Take the increased targets hit by Blinding Wind, the Mass Vortex... Excuse me, so you're hitting 5 targets per E. You hit in 25% increased ability power and then a water dragon. That's going to hit very hard. That's going to be very cool to see. So I'm interested to see if we'll see some damage lilies. That's going to be depressing but fun. Let's move on. Just going to check over there. I have a message from Sam. I'll ignore that for now and I'll have a look at it later. Muradin. Secondary wind trait. Heal increased from 1% to 1.5. It's just a little increase on his uh, passive health regen. Third wind trait. Heal amount increased from 1.5 to 2. And critical heal decreased from 5% to 4%. Dwarf toss. Uh, base range increased from 6 to 8. That's huge. That's very important. Muradin's jump was not very effective. And now it is. And dwarf launch bonus area decreased from 75 to 75 to 50%. Which is kind of cool. Haymaker. Mana cost reduced from 100 to 80. That's kind of nice. Cast bar has been added during the 0.5 wind up to make the cast more apparent. And Grand Slam talent also reduces the mana cost of Haymaker from 80 to 40. So you're going to be able to hit them twice for the exact same mana as you hit them once. Which is awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. Nova. More changes. We're... We've seen her in the patch notes quite a bit recently. We'll have to see what changes we've had to her now. Anti-armor shells talent. Damage and attack speed slow. Reduced from 300% to 250%. That's quite interesting. That means she's going to be attacking a little bit faster now with her damage. It's, a d it's better than, I think, increasing the damage on it. But it's still a pretty decent buff. It makes taking the talent a bit more viable. New talent headshot. Reduces ability cooldowns by 4 seconds after killing an enemy hero. That's kind of cool. Cloak trait. Advanced cloaking talent. Basic ability cooldown and regeneration removed. That Yes, that was amazing before. And Nova now regenerates 2 health per second while cloaked. That's not amazing. I'm not happy about that. That's good. I already am annoyed at Novas. I have issues with them. They are, annoy they are difficult to kill for me. I'm just bad at the game, but they are difficult to kill. And now they're going to be healing while they run away from me. This worries me. Alright. Pinning shot. Uh, covert ops talent. Functionally, functionality has been changed. Mana redu uh, reduction component removed. And now increases pinning shot slow amount by 1% for every second Nova is cloaked to a maximum of 50%. This effect expires if Nova is decloaked for more than one second. That's cool. And hollow decoy. Hollow clones are no, long no longer have collision. Oh, I, lo I loved using them for body block. Uh, Holocones now have movement AI as part of their base functionality. Cool. 
cast range increased by 25%. Nice. Digital shrapnel talent removed. That's the one that did uh, did damage when they explode, didn't it? And it's been added to a remote delivery talent. I don't remember what remote delivery is. Interesting. I'll have to have a look at that. And double fake talent. An AI movement component for this talent has been removed. So, yeah, it's just going to... I just spawn two of them now. So, double Nova, I think, still going to be quite... Vi uh, triple Nova, sorry, is going to be quite viable. Just get the damage increase and wreck face with everything. And now we move on to Tastar. Welcome back to the patch notes, friend. Oracle trait now reveals all cloak units, units, including Zagara's creep tumors. I thought it already did. It, I'll, I'll have to see how that's changed. Um, I don't see a mana cost on there. Or any mana cost change? It already cost mana. Um, it already revealed. So I'm really curious as to what changes would be. Maybe it's permanently on. If so, that's amazing and that's huge. They would have released, They should have said it increases the uh, radius. If so, but we'll have to see what change that is. I will look onto my NA account later to have a look over some of these. Tychus, minigun trait. Tychus no longer has to wind up his minigun to attack. Instead, it now instantly attacks beginning at slow rate of fire and increases to its previous maximum speed after 1.5 seconds. Cool, I'm fine with that. Zagara, We're on, this is the last one by the way, we're at the bottom of the heroes. Creep tumor trait, Zagara can now see the duration of remaining creep tumors Good, that was quite important that that got changed. Endless creep talent. Creep spread increase removed. Creep spread area increased from 25 to 50% and now doubles creep tumor health. That's nice. They were quite easy to clear recently. I would have preferred a mana reduction because you had ma Zagara has mana issues when she's just spreading creep everywhere, but whatever. Infested drop bile drop talent now deals 100% bonus damage on impact rather than damaging over time. Corpse Feeder's talent no longer increases Roach's duration, now decreases the damage of non-heroic units deal to Roaches by 30%. That's fine. So they don't just keep pushing forever now. They now just, well, they now just survive for their entire duration, which isn't a huge change. They already died pretty much before they killed much anyway. Devouring more R, Tyrant more talent. That is a level 20 talent. Cooldown reduction for this talent is no longer dependent on Zagara killing a hero inside the Devouring Moor. Good, because it almost never happened. This is now a passive bonus. Anytime Zagara is credited with hero takedowns, Devouring Moor's cooldown is reduced by 25%. So all, now all you have to do is just kill a hero and you get your cooldown reduced by 25 seconds. That's very, very big. Alright, let's get down to the bug fixes. Now, there's one I'm expecting to see in here. We'll have to have a look. But first, let's get, get over what we have here. General. Fix several issues that could cause abilities not to fire appropriately while holding down the right mouse button to move with quick cast enabled. Fair enough. I was not aware of that because I don't quick cast. Fixed an issue which caused exceptionally bright lighting to appear on certain heroes while watching a replay and corrected several typos and t tooltip errors across multiple aspects of the game. Uh, they say while well, watching a replay, does that include spectator mode? Because there are definitely lighting errors on uh, the garden on the Garden of Terror and the haunted mines when it is nighttime or you're in the mines when heroes get next to each other because the lighting just stacks. So that will that'll hopefully be in Battlegrounds. We'll have a look. Art fixed a slight animation pop that could occur while Tarande was riding the Battle Beast mount. Okay, was not aware of it. Battlegrounds. Catapult minions no longer deal half of their intended damage, and once again, deal area of effect damage around their target. Okay, I was not aware that was a problem, but that's kind of cool. Uh, the Burning Rage talent no longer deals double damage to towers affected by the Raven Lord's curse. I was also not aware of that one. Brightwing's face shift can no longer target the dragon statue while it is capturable. Okay, was not aware of that either, but that sounds amazing. Um, fix an issue in which summoned grave golems on the Haunted Mines dealt significantly more damage to heroes than expected. I was not aware of that either. These I haven't heard of any of these bugs. Uh, Muradin Haymaker will no longer knock enemies out of the playable area on the Haunted Mines. Why was I not aware of this? I would have abused him to the extreme. No, I wouldn't. It would have been cool to see. Uh, if there's a video out there of that, someone please send it to me because I want to see it. Uh, neutral Garden Terrors will no longer drop regenera regeneration globes inside walls. Good, that was stupid. That was such a random thing to happen. It's like, oh, regeneration globe, I really... Oh, it's in a wall, I cannot get it. And summon Grave Golems on the hall Haunted Mines now properly ignore summoned units. Fine, 
They haven't mentioned some of the bugs that uh, I've seen, seen around, but we'll see if they happen later. Heroes and Talents. Uh, yep, you can see that. Amethyst Symbiote no lo is no longer visible when near the edge of the Fog of War. Good. Casting Abathur Ultimate Evolution on a target affected by the Garden Terror Spore Queen's Curse is no longer causes the plant model to persist on the clone. I was not aware that was a thing. Arthas Ghouls no longer instantly die to a Nubarax web, uh, to a Nubarax web blast. Okay, cool. I was not aware that was a thing, but that's kind of cool. Glow effects on Arthas Frostmourne Hungers no longer visually persist through polymorph type abilities. Bolt of the Storm on Zeratul's Blink can no longer be cast while rooted. Aw, that's disappointing. That was like one of Zeratul's best features that he could get out of roots. It was very difficult to do otherwise because he would just die. Genestormo Fire Spirits no longer become unable to cast abilities if triple attack is used to jump onto the enemy Altar of the Storms. ETT's Mosh Pit now properly reveals cloaked heroes. <coughs> Excuse me. That's interesting. I was not aware I didn't. Oh, wait, yeah, I am. I've done that before, and we've had to, like, try and use AoE. Uh, visual effect of ETC's guitar solo are no longer visible through the Fog of War. I was not aware of that. Gazlo's Death Laser can now pr uh, should now properly freeze enemy structures and minions after learning the easy-peasy dimensional ripper talent. Yep, I've tried that. Didn't work at all. It was completely useless. It did not work as intended. Fixed an issue in which Illidan's The Hunt could cause unexpected behaviour with Zeratul's cloak. I think I've seen that, yeah, but I cannot remember very well. And fixed an issue that would cause Illidan to fly out of the playable area when casting The Hunt on and then shift queuing, dive onto Zer into Zeratul's Void Prism. Yep, it, it happened. Heroes that, activated, that activate Ice Block talent can no longer queue abilities until Ice Block has expired. Yep, that's... I, I, I quite like that change. That is kind of cool. Kerrigan's Assimilation talent uh, trait, sorry, now appropriately grants shields for damage dealt by her psionic pulse talent. Yep, didn't really do that very effectively. Lily's Clown Serpent will now attack mounted heroes. Good. Lily's Timeless Creature talent will no longer allow two, two serpents to be present simultaneously on the same target. Yeah, that was interesting that that could happen. It was kind of cool, but not a huge deal. A range indicator is now displayed when hovering the mouse over Malfurion's Innovate ability icon. Cool. Fixed an issue in which Muradin's starting health, uh, starting health regen was much higher than intended. Yeah, it was 20 instead of 2 or something like that. I'm glad that's been changed. Uh, Muradin's Haymaker targeting arrow will now no longer persist on the target, nor display through the Fog of War if Muradin is killed before Haymaker can be cast. I was not aware that was a thing. Nova's Hollow Decoy will now appropriately use basic attacks even if it does not have enough mana to cast abilities when it is spawned. Good. Fixed several inconsistencies that would appear uh, that would occur with Rainer's penetrating round after learning talents that modify its damage. Fixed an issue that would cause Rhaegar to briefly pause before his first basic attack after casting Feral Lunge. Yes, that was difficult. There was some Reddit comments about that. The comment for Rhaegar, uh, the cooldown, sorry, for Rhaegar's ancestral healing is now appropriately reduced by 10 seconds if the to reach 10 seconds if the ability is cancelled. Rhaegar will no longer exit ghost form, uh, ghost will form when activating the far sight talent. Good, I like that. Uh, a stitches that gorges a hero and then becomes affected by Zagara's devouring maw will now continue to hold on to the gorge target until the devouring maw expires. Stitch's hook will no longer become visually stuck on targets that cannot be pulled. Yeah, that happens. It was funny. Uh, they fixed an issue that would, uh, which would cause summoned units to deal half the. Where am I? Uh, to do half the damage to heroes with the superiority talent. The duration bar on Tassadar's Archon will no longer remain visible on to on the death screen if Tassadar is killed while transforming into his Archon. Casting Tassadar's dimensional shift immediately after being struck by Tyrande Sentinel will no longer cause the reveal indicator to persist on Tastar until his next death. Fixed a rare issue in which Ta uh, Tychus could be immediately killed upon exiting Odin after entering it at full health. I was not aware of this. Uh, corrected a tooltip which incorrectly indicated that Tychus's Draken laser was only dealing half its actual damage. Uh, if Tyrael's judgment is cancelled prior to reaching the target, he will now continue to fly toward the target's previous location rather than drop into unpathable terrain. Okay, that's cool. 
Casting Tehran's Sentinel now displays an appropriate minimap icon after learning the Ranger's talent. Yeah, it was just a dot. It was weird. Uh, the visual effects on Valor's Manticore talent will no longer persist on Tastar during Dimensional Shift. Sound. Illidan's Metamorphosis voiceover is no longer globally audible. Boo! That was fun. I liked that. You're just playing the game and suddenly you are not prepared. Or feel the hatred of 10,000 years depending on the situation. Uh, the first Blood announcer's voiceover is no longer played for each murky death while watching a replay. Oh, good lord. I was not aware of that, but good. Uh, Grave Golem attack sounds are no longer audible through Fog of War. Fog of War. Good. Selecting Sergeant Hammer's hyper cooldown engine's talent while she is dead will no longer cause the associated sound effects to play before respawning. Voiceover indicating the Garden Terror is spawning will no longer default to English when another language setting is selected. And finally, we're at the bottom of the patch notes here. Fix an issue that would cause XSUI, we're in user interface by the way, cause XSUI elements to uh, appear upon returning to the game menus after playing with a hero that cannot use mounts. A party member that cancels the matchmaking queue just as the countdown begins will no longer cause the bottom navigation bar to disappear for remaining party members. The hero level progress bar on the end game summary screens now more accurately reflects the amount of XP required when very near level up. Bring up the radical ping menu. Uh, that's the one uh, on the minimap. Will no longer cause the minimap to stop functioning. I didn't know it was a thing. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That, this has been quite a long video. There was a lot of patches, a lot of patch notes to go through. Let's keep scrolling until we get to the top so you can see exactly how mu many patches have been put into the game to bring it into beta. But we are now officially in beta by the time this video goes up. So get out there. If you've just gone into Heroes of the Storm, welcome. These are your changes. Go play the game. Go have fun. I know I'm going to. I'm going to be playing some Thrall. You can check out the rest of my videos for that. You will see a Thrall video coming up soon. Also an Abba for one. I wanted to wait until the patch was done before I finished the video. See if I could get any clips in of that. Be sure to check out the rest of my videos. Like, comment, rate, and subscribe. Dislike if you don't like the video. Comment on stuff you didn't like if you do do that so that I can work on it in the future. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.